Powered industrial trucks, commonly referred to as forklifts or lift trucks, are used in a wide variety of workplaces. From warehouses to construction sites, forklifts play an important role. From internal combustion engine trucks, electric motor hand trucks, to rough terrain forklift trucks, there are forklifts for just about every need. While forklifts are primarily used to load and unload materials, they are also used for other reasons, such as raising and lowering large objects, moving pallets and items in boxes, crates, and other containers. There are many possible hazards which can occur while operating a forklift. Forklift operators and employees working around forklift operations face the risk of hazards such as collisions, falls, tip-overs, and struck-by conditions. Operating a forklift safely requires preparation, anticipation, and careful attention to maintain control of the vehicle at all times. This training program will highlight different areas of forklift operations. It is imperative that employees fully understand all aspects of forklift operations, the different circumstances and situations regarding their work environment, and the exact type of forklift truck they will be using. Additional training, specific to the type and model of forklift being used, is also necessary. This video will examine the following. Forklift types, training requirements, general requirements, power sources, inspections, operations, traveling, loading, high tiering, truck trailer and railroad cars, tip over, and workplace conditions. Forklift types. There are seven classes of commonly used powered industrial trucks, which include Class 1, electric motor rider trucks. Class 2, electric motor narrow aisle trucks. Class 3, electric motor hand trucks or hand rider trucks. Class 4, internal combustion engine trucks with solid cushion tires. Class 5, internal combustion engine trucks with pneumatic tires. Class 6, electric and internal combustion engine tractors. And Class 7, rough terrain forklift trucks. This classification does not include all powered industrial trucks covered by the OSHA standard 29 CFR 1910.178, but the most common there are many types of powered industrial trucks. Each type presents different operating knowledge, skills, and hazards. Employees must read and become familiar with the operator's manual for the forklift being used and always follow the manufacturer's recommendations. Training Requirements Only trained and competent operators are permitted to operate powered industrial trucks. Forklift operators must be trained and certified by their employer. Trained operators must know how to do the job properly and do it safely as demonstrated by a workplace evaluation. Training should consist of a combination of formal instruction, practical training, and evaluation of the operator's performance in the workplace. Formal training consists of classroom type lecture, discussion, interactive computer learning, video, and written material. Practical training includes demonstrations performed by the trainer and practical exercises performed by the trainee. Prior to operating the truck in the workplace, the employer must evaluate the operator's performance and determine the operator to be competent to operate a powered industrial truck safely. Refresher training is needed whenever an operator demonstrates a deficiency in the safe operation of the truck. Employers must certify that each operator has been trained and evaluated as required by OSHA at least once every three years. Certification must include the name of the operator, the date of training, the date of evaluation, and the identity of the trainer. It is a violation of federal law for anyone under 18 years of age to operate a forklift. General Requirements 
every forklift has certain general requirements as mandated by OSHA. Nameplate Forklifts must have a durable, corrosion-resistant, legible nameplate or data plate which provides important information such as the truck model and serial number, fuel type, forklift weight, and capacity. Employees need to know how to read and understand the nameplate and to know what the information means. Capacity Each forklift has a load capacity. Manufacturers set capacity guidelines for how much a forklift can safely lift. Exceeding the capacity of a forklift is very unsafe and can cause serious hazards, including tip over. Operators must check the nameplate for maximum capacity and maximum height. Know the capacity of the forklift and do not exceed it. Any attachment to the truck generally lowers the capacity of the forklift. The size, position, and weight distribution of the load also affects its capacity. The capacity assumes that the center of gravity of the load is at the load center as shown on the label. If this is not the case, the load may exceed the forklift's capacity. Forks Forks should be inspected during the pre-operative inspection and at the beginning of each shift. If the forks are damaged or defective in any way, do not operate the forklift. Damaged forks should be withdrawn from service and discarded or properly repaired. The positioning lock holds the forks in position and prevents sliding of the forks and can prevent loss of a load. If the positioning lock has been removed or is inoperable, do not use the forklift. Attachments Forklifts often use different attachments in place of traditional forks. Attachments increase the versatility of the lift but can present important safety considerations including stability, capacity, and visibility. Potential hazards include overloading, tipping, and falling loads. Operators must be trained in the proper use of attachments before using. Only use the attachment for its intended purpose. Do not exceed the rated capacity of the forklift and attachment combination. Treat unloaded forklifts with attachments as partially loaded. Attachments should be included in any scheduled maintenance and inspection program. Danger, Warning, and Caution Labels Forklifts may have other warning labels or decals besides the nameplate, which provide safety information to the operators. Safety labels must be clearly visible to the operator and must be replaced if missing, damaged, or illegible. Controls Operators must read and study the operator's manual before using the forklift. Operators should locate each control and understand how to use each of them properly. Dashboard Instruments Operators must be familiar with the different dashboard warning lights and gauges. Operators should consult the operations manual for the requirements and recommended practices regarding dashboard gauges and lights. Forklifts should never be used if a warning light or gauge signals an unsafe condition. If a warning light comes on, do not continue to operate the lift. Stop and park it and immediately inform your supervisor. Power Sources Currently, there are two main power sources for powered industrial trucks, internal combustion and electric. Internal combustion runs on liquid petroleum gas, LPG, compressed natural gas, CNG, gasoline, diesel, or other fuels. Refueling can be dangerous. Make sure you refuel only at designated safe locations and always turn off the engine before refueling. Never smoke while refueling and follow all safety instructions of the manufacturer and your employer. Electric trucks use an onboard battery. A designated battery charging area should be established and appropriate PPE must be worn when charging or maintaining a battery. 
Only trained personnel should charge and change batteries in electric forklifts. They should also be trained on emergency procedures in case of an acid splash. Battery acid, a strong form of sulfuric acid, is corrosive and can cause severe burns. Remember when charging, pour acid into water, never pour water into acid. Flammable hydrogen gas is always present when charging batteries. It is potentially explosive and should not be allowed to accumulate in the charging area. Some of the required aspects of the charging area include no smoking and having adequate fire protection available. Pay attention to and follow all posted signs. If none exist in the area, talk to your supervisor. Have ample and ready available water supply for flushing and neutralizing spilled acid. An eye wash station should be nearby along with a first aid kit. Proper and adequate ventilation is necessary to avoid buildup of hydrogen gas during charging. Other power sources are becoming more common such as fuel cells and hybrid systems. Additional training may be required as they become more widespread. Inspections. OSHA requires that all forklifts be examined at least once daily before being used. Forklifts used on a round-the-clock basis must be examined after each shift. Operators must conduct a pre-start visual check with the key off and then perform an operation check with the engine running. If the pre-operation inspection shows the forklift needs repair, is defective, or in any way unsafe, it should not be driven and taken out of service immediately. Problems should be recorded and reported to a supervisor. Pre-operation inspection. Before starting the forklift, conduct a pre-operation inspection which covers but is not limited to the following. Fluid levels, oil, water, and hydraulic fluid. Leaks, cracks, or any other visible defects. Tire condition and pressure, including cuts and gouges. Condition of forks. Load backrest extension. Finger guards. Safety decals and nameplates. Operator manual is on truck and is legible. All safety devices are working properly, including seat belt. Additional items should be checked depending on the type of forklift. Consult the manufacturer's operation manual or your company's inspection forms for more details. Operational Inspection After completing the pre-operational inspection, operators should conduct an operational inspection with the engine running. This inspection includes accelerator linkage, inch control if equipped, brakes, steering, drive control, front and back, tilt control, forward and back, hoist and lowering control, attachment control, horn, backup alarm, hour meter. If you find anything wrong while doing either inspection, write it down on the inspection sheet and report it to your supervisor. Never drive a truck with problems. Operations. While driving a forklift, operators must be aware of potential hazards, such as mechanical breakdown, fire, overheating, and leakage. Forklift operators must always follow safe operating rules. Never overload a fork truck or extend a load past the center of gravity. Always maintain control of the forklift. Keep a proper lookout and operate the forklift at speeds appropriate for the operation and worksite conditions. Never allow a person to stand under or pass under the elevated portion of any truck, whether loaded or empty. When a forklift is left unattended, lower any load and neutralize controls, shut off power and set brakes. Wheels must be blocked if the truck is parked on an incline. Keep a safe distance from the edge of ramps or platforms while on any elevated dock, platform, or freight car. Traveling. Forklifts should be operated at a speed which allows for stopping in a safe manner, avoiding tip-overs, 
and avoiding collision with pedestrians and obstacles. Always maintain a safe distance between forklifts, approximately three truck lengths. Slow down and sound horn at cross aisles and other areas where view is obstructed. Slow down on wet and slippery floors and avoid driving over loose objects. Look in the direction of travel, always keeping a clear view. Equip forklifts with headlights where general lighting is less than two lumens per square foot. In general, if working at night, outdoors, or in any area where additional lighting would improve visibility, the forklift should be equipped with headlights. Ascend and descend grades slowly. When a grade is in excess of 10%, loaded trucks must be driven with the load up grade. Reduce speed when turning and never turn on a grade. On all grades, the load and load engaging means must be tilted back if applicable and raised only enough to clear the road surface. Never turn on a ramp. When traveling with a load on a ramp or incline, the load should always point up the incline, regardless of the direction of travel. Drive forward going up the ramp with forks pointed up grade and drive in reverse with the forks pointed up grade going down the ramp. When traveling without a load on a ramp or incline, the forks should always be pointed down grade, regardless of the direction of travel. When walking with a pallet truck, with or without a load, the forks should always be pointed down grade, regardless of the direction of travel. Approach elevators slowly and enter squarely after the elevator car is properly leveled. Once on the elevator, neutralize the controls, shut off the power, and set the brakes. Drive slowly into and out of warehouses or other buildings. Going from bright daylight into a darker warehouse could cause impaired visibility. Stunt driving and horseplay are never allowed. Dock boards or bridge plates must be properly secured and driven over slowly and carefully. Their rated capacity must never be exceeded. Come to a complete stop before changing directions and use a horn or warning light to warn pedestrians when reversing. Do not park in unauthorized areas or block aisles or exits. Set the parking brake when stopping. Loading. Handling loads can present different hazards for different forklifts. Improper techniques or loading can cause a forklift to tip over, the load to drop, a collision, or other accidents. Prior to picking up any load, inspect it and center it as much as possible. Secure the load so it is stable and arranged safely. Loads should be secured by wrapping or banding when necessary. Approach the load slowly and carefully and make sure the truck is squarely in front of the load and the forks are set at the correct height. Forks should be placed under the load as far as possible, at least two thirds the length of the load and the mast tilted back carefully to stabilize the load. Carefully lift the load off the ground just enough to clear Tilt the mast back slightly to rest the load against the backrest extension. When stacking or tiering, tilt backward only enough to stabilize the load. Use extreme caution when tilting loads. Do not tilt forward with the forks elevated except when picking up or depositing a load. Prior to raising the load, make sure there is adequate overhead clearance. While lowering the load, slowly move the truck to approximately one foot from the stack. Stop the truck and return the mast to the vertical position. Lower the load to approximately six inches from the floor and move forward slowly till the load is in position. Then lower the load completely and back the forks out from underneath the load. High tearing. Reach trucks are often used for high tiering, which involves stacking loads in multiple tiers high off the ground. This is common practice in large warehouses with multiple large shelving units. 
The heaviest loads should be on the bottom tier and the lightest loads on the top tier. Reduce the load below capacity of the reach truck as the mast is fully extended. Carefully extend the reach mechanism of the truck forward when depositing the load. Use extreme caution when tilting a load forward or backward, especially when high tiering and on the top tier. Improper tiering of a load can cause a truck to tip over. Truck trailers and railroad cars. Driving forklifts into and out of truck trailers or railroad cars can be very dangerous. Operators should be aware of situations such as falling off a loading dock and slipping or inadequate dock boards. Additionally, trucks, trailers, or railroad cars can move during loading and unloading. Prior to loading or unloading, make sure to set brakes and block wheels of trucks, trailers, or railroad cars. The use of fixed jacks may be necessary to support a semi-trailer during loading and unloading when a trailer is not coupled to a truck tractor. Wheel stops or other approved positive protection must be provided to prevent railroad cars from moving during loading or unloading operations and while dock boards or bridge plates are in position. OSHA has additional safety requirements for dock boards and dock plates, which can be found in the Walking Working Surfaces Standard 29 CFR 1910.26. You should be familiar with these requirements if driving on dock plates or dock boards. If you must drive over a railroad track, do so diagonally whenever possible. Before driving a forklift onto the flooring of trucks, trailers, and railroad cars, check for brakes and weakness. Often, older boxcars and trailers have unsafe flooring. Ensure the height of the entry door is adequate to clear the height of the forklift, taking into consideration the height of the loading platform. Drive straight across the bridge plates when entering or exiting the truck, trailer, or railroad car. Do not leave a loaded forklift on a dock plate. Use dock lights and headlights when working in a dark trailer. Sound the horn when entering or exiting the trailer. And stay away from the edge on loading docks. Tip over. There are two basic types of tip overs in a forklift. A forward tip, referred to as longitude tip, and a lateral or side tip. Forklift tip-overs are the leading cause of fatalities involving forklifts. For tip-overs on a sit-down counterbalance truck, which are the most common, the following tips may save you from serious injury. Don't jump. Stay in the forklift. Hold tight to the steering wheel. Brace your feet. Lean away from the impact. Lean forward. Tip-over procedures vary depending upon the type of forklift. It is important that you understand the type of forklift you are using and know how to protect yourself in the event you are involved in a tip-over. Workplace Conditions Operating a forklift safely also requires awareness of the workplace and the conditions under which you are driving. You must be aware of things such as physical conditions, pedestrian traffic, and loading docks, just to name a few items. All operating surfaces must be strong enough to support the forklift, the operator, and the load. Surfaces should be free of holes, grease, oil, or obstructions. Forklift traffic should be separated from other workers and pedestrians where possible. When it isn't possible, operators must always be aware of the possibility of pedestrians coming into their pathway. Conclusion Operating a forklift is an important job in most industries. Always know the type of truck you are driving and make sure you inspect it before taking the wheel. Never overload your truck or drive too fast for conditions. Be safe while driving the forklift every day, every time.